Good morning. Let's start with Good an morning. emergency announcement. <coughs> I did not read the flyer close enough to realize the Lutheran Women's Missionary League Fall Zone Rally that is going to be held on Saturday, October 16th in Montgomery. That's 8.30 to 11.30 on the 16th of October. It has a registration deadline. Well, actually, an RSVP by, and that would be Friday of this week. So this is an announcement that had to be made before next Sunday. Uh, deadline kind of is Friday. And to contact me if uh, you're going, so we can register as a group. Or contact Bonnie. If you're going, we can register as a group. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I will be there. All, all the cool kids and cool dogs are going to be there. Yeah, comfort dogs. The comfort dogs. Okay. Um, second emergency announcement: poinsettias. You know, we usually sign up a little bit later, but there's a deadline this year, which is October seventeenth because supply chain and all kinds of all that that's going on right now. So there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin table. Uh, we're getting ready for Christmas now. Okay. The service today, we will sort of skim through all of the lessons, including the psalm. There's a verse in there to snag and bring in. There's a verse in James to snag and bring in. Um, and it's built around the question of what is your heart's true desire? What do you really want? And asking that question in a certain way of the various people in the Bible and then asking it about Jesus is a very interesting thing. Our first song we snagged from the old red hymnal because they changed the tune and it was not as dramatic in the new tune and we, we do like a bit of drama sometimes if it's the right kind. <laughs> so, musically dramatic. Let's sing. Down your weary one, lay down. 
and we rise to hear the words of our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, God who, who is faithful, faithful and just, will, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God we, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have, we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, by his authority and by his command, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 37, the first portion. Note especially verse 4. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass. And wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light. And the justice. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way. Over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land. And delight themselves in abundant peace. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, source of every blessing, mercifully direct and govern us by your Holy Spirit that we may complete the works you have prepared for us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, I got reading glasses. The Old Testament lesson for today is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, selected verses. Now the rabble that was among the children of Israel had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give their fathers. Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they weep before me and say, give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once, if I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders, and as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, from his youth said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our epistle lesson is taken from James chapter 5, verse 13 to the end of the letter. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him 
anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And we rise and we sing. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Starting at verse 38. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, Tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, number 708, Lord Thee I Love With All My Heart.
patience unto me to bear my cross and follow thee. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Lord, my God and Lord, in death thy comfort still. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon, we're going to run through every one of them, but from the gospel lesson, for the one who is against, for the one who is not against us is for us, for truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. And so we begin, we begin by looking back into the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 11. There were the Israelites mourning because they did not have meat to eat. Oh, that we were back in Egypt. Oh, that we had, we had the cucumbers, the leeks, the melons, the onions, the garlic, the, and on and on. Oh, that we were still slaves. What? Have they lost it completely? And yet, what an illustration for Christians. Christians, that's us, <coughs> who are all too often double-minded, can't figure out which way we want to go, which, which things we prefer, can't figure out what we truly desire. Christians looking back on what they have had to give up of this world's goods and pleasures for the privilege of walking with Jesus. And instead we are called to look forward. Look forward to a kingdom or as letter of the Hebrews says, to a city made without hands, to that place where God will gather all of his own and bless for all eternity. Yeah, we are double-minded in so many ways. The reason why we are double-minded is because we are sinner saints. We have an old sinful nature and a new nature created by God to believe in Jesus and hear the gospel and receive the gospel. But that old Adam, the old sinful nature, he has his own religion. It's the natural religion of the natural man. It's called the religion of the law, the preaching of the law. It's the religion of 
you do this and you'll be rewarded. And the old sinful nature wants to believe that he can do it and wants to believe that he can earn the reward, wants to believe that he can deserve heaven and eternal life. Look at me, how good I am. It's the natural religion of the entire human race. This is why TV preachers have such success. But you watch the old Adam and the old sinful nature and natural religion, and as soon as the law of God that he claims to obey and follow and be earning eternal life, as soon as the law of God touches on one of his pet sins. Oh, you should hear the howls. Calling the Bible old-fashioned and foolish and stupid. And, and then he starts in calling God names and saying this whole business of us preaching the cross and preaching about Jesus, well, that's just irrelevant. That's just, that's just fairy tales. And so the Israelites howled and wailed that they were not back in Egypt with the whip of the taskmaster. Ah, but there were cucumbers and leeks and melons and onions and garlic there. God called Abraham, on the other hand, called him to a faith where Abraham claimed no righteousness, claimed to deserve nothing, claimed to have earned nothing. And then the Israelites... God called them to a walk with God through the wilderness that was to be the people of God and be supplied with everything they needed. And it was a, a gift from God completely by God's own grace. But give it time. Give it a few centuries. And you get to the New Testament and the teaching of the Pharisees. They managed to turn everything around into a religion of doing and a religion of deserving and a religion of claiming their own righteousness and chasing after a holiness. And the disciples... Did I mention this was the religion of natural man? So the disciples are being pulled and tugged in this direction too. And it's time for Jesus to give some interesting preaching which says basically, oh, you want to go that way? You want to... You want to claim a righteousness and earn a holiness? Let's just follow that path. I learned this while studying philosophy. It's called reductio ad absurdum. You take what your opponent has said and you say, oh, really? Well, let's follow this out and see where it ends. Okay? You want a holiness? Has your hand ever caused you to sin? How about your foot? How about your eye? And eventually you realize that there is mockery here. So here it comes. You know what you call somebody who follows that path of righteousness faithfully? You call them Stumpy. <laughs> Which of these appendages has not been involved in sin? Which still doesn't get to the real problem, does it? Because sin is a matter of the heart. What are you going to do about that? Yeah, 
Yeah. Eventually you get to, and the, this is one of the texts for two Sundays from now. It's Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, and we get to go to Ezekiel chapter 36, where God says, No, I will remove the heart of stone from you, and I will put in you a heart of flesh. There's the new heart. What are you going to do about the heart? Absolutely nothing. You can't do anything about the heart. God says, I'm the one that has to do it. Oh. And there's the call from God. It's the call from God going forward. It is the call from God to this kingdom where... It actually is a kingdom of righteousness and holiness because amazing as it is, God takes me and begins to rework me from the inside out to be conformed eventually to the image of Christ. where we're going to be, I'm going to paraphrase Matthew 25, where we're going to be there on Judgment Day and Jesus is going to pronounce the blessing on us and we're going to say, wait, what, how'd this happen? There is some surprise that Jesus warns us that we as the church are going to experience when these good things happen. Hmm. But all around the world right now, people get religion wrong. And they got, him, and they got God himself wrong and turn him into something he is not. And then they chase after what they want right now. back to the question what do you want what is truly the desire of your heart what do you want and you take that question having looked around at all humanity and then you begin to look at Jesus what did Jesus want and when you ask it in that setting, in that way, well, that changes everything. It's about Jesus, isn't it? It's not about me. So about Jesus, what did he want? Well, in his own words, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Rejoicing at God opening up his kingdom to those who haven't figured it out. And those verses followed by Jesus saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And so coming to Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. What did he want? Endured the cross, scorning its shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What exactly was the joy set before him? Was it glory? He had glory. He gave it up. Was it power? He had all power. He set that aside to be born into this world and be helpless. What did he want? The joy set before him was you. 
to have you living forever, to have you enjoying all the good things of heaven, to have you to be with him so he could be with you and enjoy your living forever. See, Jesus does talk about being single-minded. And most of the focus of when Jesus talks about being single-minded is the single-mindedness of God. As in like this. There was a man who found a treasure in a field and he buried it back up and for joy went and sold everything he had to buy that field. It's the parable of the treasure in the field. And it is, first of all, it is about Jesus and you being the treasure that he treasured. And then there was a guy, he was a merchant, dealing with pearls, among other things, and he found he came across a pearl of great price and for joy sold everything he had in order to gain that pearl. And again, it is first about Jesus giving up everything in order to gain you. And then you come to the moments before Gethsemane. John chapter 17, Jesus' great high priestly prayer. Getting ready to head out to Gethsemane and then to the cross. And his last prayer, the last thing he has to ask of his father is this. Father, I want them to be with me and to see my glory. And that's sweet. It is sweet to be in that relationship with the one who is God but has cared for you and really wants you in his kingdom and living forever so he can spend all of eternity with you being around. What do you want? The question keeps coming back. What do you want? In light of the gospel. Well, in the light of the gospel, the brother of Jesus by the name of James writes at the end of his letter, whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul and will cover a multitude of sins. And two guys I know over in Africa, South Africa and Botswana, Philip and Tsumami. When he graduated from seminary, he told them, he told them he wanted to preach the gospel and don't send him to a place with an established church that was a comfortable situation. Send him where they have not heard. What did he want? And Buka, Buka Tsumako. I have videos of Buka. Buka, when he preaches, he cannot hold still. For the joy of being able to tell the gospel about Jesus Christ, he's in the pulpit kind of dancing as he preaches. It's a wondrous thing to see. The joy of the gospel. 
Because when you are in this relationship with God and the whole business and the whole question of your future, your destiny, your eternity, when all of that's been answered and answered by the Son of God who gave himself to purchase and win you and the whole thing is by grace and it's the grace of God and it's an eternal thing, then the question, what do you want, is a very different question. To be with God. To see the salvation of your neighbor. And the amazing thing that God can do, turning a soul around, giving a new heart, and bringing somebody into this relationship of eternal blessings. And of course, for me, personally, to see my children and my grandchildren in the kingdom of God, sharing in eternal life and eternal blessings. What do you want? And what did Jesus want? In his name, amen. We rise. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting, amen. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, our friend, our brother, our Savior, our Lord, we come to you asking you to guide our hearts, to fill us with your desires, to send us out into the world with this message of life, to give us boldness. We pray for the souls of our neighbors and all those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask for the congregation at Beecher, Illinois, that was destroyed by fire. That is their church building. We ask that the congregation may Continue on with faith in you. Receive your blessings in this time of, time of difficulty. Begin to rebuild and to reach out, showing, exhibiting that, that faith in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask for our nation and for the leaders of our nation that you would give your wisdom, that you would take a hold of them and guide them by your Spirit for the blessing of your people and for the blessing of this nation. And we ask for the pastors, the Christians, and the people of Afghanistan that you would watch over them and in spite of all the barriers to the gospel, 
continue to spread your kingdom in that nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask for the many among us in need of your healing mercy that you would strengthen and restore, guide doctors and nurses, bless the treatments, the medicines, give healing. Watch over Jerry Farber. Watch over Harry, Phyllis, Jody, Judy, Adolph, Sharon, Dick, Eileen, Byron, Connie, Ray, Adam, Joan, Dwayne, Anita, Sarah, Penny, and Kurt. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask you to watch over those who have ongoing personal and medical needs to guide them and strengthen their faith, to bless them, see them through the trials of each day, to watch over the doctors and the nurses and all who minister to them. We ask your blessing upon Phil, Cindy, Augusta, Linda, David, Dina, Reagan, Milt, Megan, Christine, Paige, and Sammy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Watch over our loved ones in nursing homes, assisted living centers who are homebound. To guard and keep them, to guide their healing and bless it. Watch over Tina, Jody, Sharon, Phyllis, and Art. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guard and keep our loved ones in the armed services. Protect them and guide them that they may walk as your people. Watch over Mitchell, Blake, Lisa, Christian, David, and Brian. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask your blessings on our missions and missionaries, those in Hispanic ministry, those who are reaching out to communities of the Mideast, and those involved in deaf ministry in our nation and throughout the world. Grant that your gospel may reach every corner, every language, every people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear us, Father, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, risen, ascended, and glorious, who has taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with delight and give you peace. Final hymn is number 802, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. How is this related to the lessons of the day? Well, not really. Just wanted to sing that song. Immortal, invisible, God
life thou givest to both great and small. In all life thou livest the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not change as thee. And we have some announcements. Once again, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League Fall Zone Rally. Uh, register by Friday. Call Bonnie if you wish to be a part of a group registration. Um, poinsettias by the 17th have to be committed to. And... Uh, the Zoom Bible study this week will jump ahead to Judges 17. Um, first of two stories that's at the end of the book, but actually happened at the beginning. And um, there are reasons why we know it happened at the beginning, because of the references back and forth. Uh, it's just almost absolutely for sure. Um, and that's about all. Go have fun at Corn Fest and watch a parade. <laughs> <laughs>